channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing three new DIY spring decoration ideas that are all quick and easy to do. I am going to be using all materials that I've had in my craft stash for quite a while now, and I hope that I'm able to inspire you to use some of the items from your craft stash as well. Before we get into today's video, I am going to be talking about this top that I'm wearing here today. It is from Thread Tank. I absolutely love their brand, but what I love even more is their slogan and what they represent, which is personalized stories that you can wear. I was able to pick out three different tops from their website that are personalized to me. I've washed all three of these tops several times and they are holding up really, really well. The first one I picked out is this Crafters Gonna Craft top. As you guys know, I love crafting and it's very fitting for me and my channel. I loved it when I saw it and knew I had to get it. If you guys are DIY and crafters, which you probably are because you're watching my channel, they have a whole DIY collection of tops over on their website and I know that you guys will love them. The second one that I picked out is a marine wife top. It is very personalized for me because I am a marine wife. I don't think I've ever mentioned that here on my channel. I've been a marine wife for almost 14 years now, so I love this top. And then the third one that's personalized to me is this Michigan Roots top. I am originally from Michigan, even though I currently live in Texas. I am a Michigan girl at heart, and I can't wait to get back there. So you guys, I found three really great personalized tops for myself, and I know that you'll be able to find some really great personalized tops for you or even a friend as well. These tops make great gifts, and I was able to get a 10% coupon code for any of you that are interested in any of their tops. It is Christina 10% and I'll have their website and the uh, coupon code in the description box below. Now that you guys know about these really amazing tops, let's go ahead and jump right into today's DIYs. For the first DIY, I'll be making a palette succulent garden. And for this project, I used two mini palettes from Dollar Tree, mini succulents that I got from Amazon, Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, Folk Art Wood Tint in the color gray, paint brushes, Spanish Moss from Dollar Tree, scissors, jute, and my hot glue gun. For this project, I started by painting both of my mini wood palettes with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, and I wasn't worried about painting in between the wood slats too much because you're not gonna see those later on. And I did do one coat of paint on this, and then I also painted the backside of the wood palettes as well. Once that paint was completely dried, I then took some paper towel and my folk art wood tint in the color gray, and I just pretty much applied it like you would a stain, just wiped it on and then wiped the excess off. I wish I would have used like an old towel or something because the paper towel did kind of uh, break up a little bit. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna be doing this, it's better to use an old towel, not a paper towel. Once that wood tint has completely dried, I'm then taking some hot glue and applying it to the top edge of the bottom palette that I'm gonna be using. And then I'm pressing the two palettes together to connect them and I'm just holding them together until the glue has completely dried. Next, I'm adding some Spanish moss to my wood palette. And to do that, I placed hot glue right in between the slats of the palettes and then pressed the Spanish moss on top of the glue. And I continued that step over and over again until I had the Spanish moss in between all of the wood slats. And to help me out a little bit and get the Spanish moss like pushed in between the slats, I used the end of an old paintbrush and that really seemed to help me out a lot. After I've added all of my Spanish moss, I then took some scissors and trimmed all of it up so that it was a little bit more manicured and not so messy looking. Next, I'm adding some of these mini succulents that I picked up from Amazon. I'm pressing the stems of them right in between the Spanish moss that I applied, and I just keep moving them around until I get them exactly where I want them. And I will say these were really great quality succulents, but I had opened them up out of their package and just had them pretty much thrown in my craft stash. So it did take some of the coating off of them. So if you're gonna be using these, don't open them until you're ready to use them. Now that I have my succulents all placed where I want them, I'm flipping my palette over. And then to hold all of the succulents in place, I'm placing hot glue around the stems and just holding them into place until the glue dries. I was gonna attach them um, with either some string or 
bend over the metal part along the backside on the stem of the succulent, but the metal is really, really thick and I wasn't able to bend it, so I ended up just using the hot glue. For the last step, I'm making my hanger for my palette. I'm taking two pieces of jute and I'm tying a knot on one end. I'm measuring how long I want my hanger to be. I'm tying a knot on the other end and then just cutting off that excess jute. And then to attach the hanger, I'm placing hot glue along the backside of the palette and pressing the jute uh, strands that I just made a knot on right onto the glue to fully attach them to make my hanger. And here is my mini succulent garden all finished. I love how this turned out and these little mini succulents are such good quality. They would be great for any spring or summer project. And now moving on to DIY number two, I'm making a spring wreath. For this project, I used a 10 inch embroidery hoop, a mini wooden birdhouse, Waverly chalk paint in plaster, folk art chalk paint in castle, paint brushes, Spanish moss from Dollar Tree and also reindeer moss from Dollar Tree, floral foam, eucalyptus stems from Walmart, spring stems from Dollar Tree, jute, scissors, and my hot glue gun. For this project, I started by painting my house with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I used this color on the front, the sides, and the back of this house, and I only had to do one coat of paint for this. And for the top of the house, I painted it with my folk art chalk paint in the color Castle, and I only had to do one coat of this as well. And then for the bottom base of my house, I used that same Castle color. I then painted my embroidery hoop with Waverly chalk paint in the color Crystal, and then I decided that I really didn't like that color and I wanted this uh, embroidery hoop to match the birdhouse. So once that crystal color dried, I just painted over it with that Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster so that it would match my birdhouse. I wasn't really a fan of the hanger that was in the birdhouse originally, so I took that out and to replace it, I used two strands of jute and I tied them together. I did two large knots so that when I place this into the birdhouse, it'll stay in and not come out. I then took the other end of those pieces of jute and strung it through the top hole in the birdhouse. It was a little bit tricky and took me a few attempts to finally get it through, but after a little while, I finally got it. I then took those strands of jute and I wanted to see about where I wanted the birdhouse to hang on my embroidery hoop, so I was just working with it a little bit to see exactly where I needed to tie it. I then untied the house and took it off of the embroidery hoop because I decided I wanted to add some moss to the roof of the house. So I'm taking some hot glue, putting it right on the roof of the house, and then pressing some of this reindeer moss from Dollar Tree right over top. I did that to both sides of the roof. And then once I had it all on, I obviously needed to trim it because it was really long and out of control. So I took some scissors and trimmed it up a bit. And then I also wanted to add a little bit of Spanish moss. So here I'm doing the same thing. I'm placing hot glue right on top of the roof of the house and then pressing some of that Spanish moss over top. I also added the reindeer moss and Spanish moss to the stem of the house and then also the base, the same as I did the moss on the roof. I'm now taking my embroidery hoop and the side with the screw on it, I'm centering it into my floral foam and then just pressing it right into that foam. And I forgot to mention earlier, I am only using the outer ring of this embroidery hoop. This is just a leftover one I had in my craft stash. I'm then taking some of this eucalyptus right off their stems and I picked the eucalyptus up from Walmart and I'm pressing the stems of the eucalyptus right into the floral foam. And originally I was just gonna have the eucalyptus stick out, but then decided I wanted to have them like wrapped around the floral foam. So then I'm taking the other end of that eucalyptus and pressing that into the floral foam as well. And I added more of the eucalyptus stems all the way around the front of this piece of floral foam. Next, I'm adding some more flowers and greenery from the stems that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I'm using the end of a paintbrush to make a hole in my floral foam and then placing hot glue in that hole and then just pressing the stems right in there. And I did take the stems off and cut them down a little bit so that they were easier to place in my hole. And I'm continuing that same step until I have the front of the floral foam completely covered in flowers and greenery. 
Next, I'm adding some Spanish moss to this floral arrangement. To attach it, I'm placing hot glue right onto the floral foam and then pressing the Spanish moss over top of it. And I did this for in between all of the greenery and then on all of the other parts of the floral foam that we're showing on the sides and then also on the back side. For the last step in this project, I'm wrapping my hanger for my birdhouse around the very top of my embroidery hoop. I'm getting it all into place and centered before I add some hot glue on that jute and then I'm just holding it into place until the glue has completely dried. Here is my spring embroidery hoop wreath all finished. This project just screams spring to me and I did end up hanging it from the center of an old picture frame. And now for the last DIY today, I'll be making a lavender floral arrangement. For this project, I used a small glass votive, black sand from Dollar Tree, white stones also from Dollar Tree, lavender stems from Hobby Lobby, jute, and some scissors. For this one, I started out by pouring this black sand that I picked up from Dollar Tree right into this glass jar or votive until it was about three quarters of the way full. I then added some of these white rocks that I also picked up from Dollar Tree right over top of that black sand until my jar was completely full. After I had my jar full, I then took some of these cutters and cut these lavenders right off of their stems. And I did pick this um, set of lavender up at Hobby Lobby. Next, I took each little stem of lavender and placed it right in between the rocks going down into the sand to hold all of them into place. And I continued that until I had lavender going around the entire jar and I think I used five of them. Once I had the lavender in, I then took a piece of jute and I wrapped it around the very top of the jar and just made a small knot and cut off the excess jute. Here is my lavender floral arrangement all complete. This one was so simple to make. It couldn't get any easier. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. And please be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I would love to hear in the comments down below which project from today was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching.